you. What do they call you up there? They call me Mr. Tibbs. Mr. Tibbs? Well, Mr. Wood, take Mr. Tibbs, take him down to the depot, and I mean boy like now. Have the FBI lab send you the report on this. Not that it'll make any difference. I'll take that. All right, here we go. Hitting the open road, leaving Tennessee. Heading up to southern Illinois for some filming locations for the 1967 classic. One of AFI's top 100 movies of all time. One best picture at the 1968 Oscars. It's the excellent movie from 1967, In the Heat of the Night. We're going to see the spots. Some of them aren't there anymore. We're going to them anyways. A lot of them are still standing. We're definitely going to those. Welcome to Ryan and Virginia go to the movies. I'm Ryan, this is Virginia. And uh, this is a, a hobby of ours we've been doing for a while. Do the then and now pictures on Instagram and Facebook for family and friends and other people that like to do this hobby. But I figured it was time. Let me get a nice camera and let's start documenting this stuff on video. So that's what we're doing. What's that little orphan sitting right up there? Marble cake. Tell you what, Sam. The inch is in there by a little old lonesome. I'll let you have her for free. I told you about that Sam business dinner. Huh? <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Wood. I mean, uh, Officer Wood. Okay, we made it with like two, three minutes left of daylight to spare. But this is the, the area where the cafe was, the Compton Cafe, or Compton's Cafe. And it was sitting right here, pointing out to the corner. And the reason I know that is because I've got an old aerial photo where you can match up the Coke sign to the top of the building and see exactly where it was right here. And the reason I went searching so hard for that picture is because I wanted to know if the cars turned out right here or behind this grass patch. Because the poles aren't there anymore. But I thought it could have been this one because there are poles here. But no, the sign was right there. There were some telephone poles. And this is where they turn out of. So, cafe here. They turn left out of here. Your town, up to here. Boy, it would give me a world of satisfaction to horsewhip you, Virgil. <laughs> yeah, my, <laughs> my father used to say that. <laughs> All right, we're here at the Missilorn Art Gallery, which was the train station. It was an actual train station, now an art gallery. And it was the train station that Sydney Poitier first uh, was at and a bunch of scenes take place here somewhere on the inside and they are closed today 
they're closed every day right now because of COVID. I was told after calling. Uh, but somewhere in here, I can't pinpoint it because there was a bathroom next to them and I don't see a bathroom through the windows anywhere. But you can see, I'm gonna go back over here because the walls are exactly the same. Now they've got the, the paneling there on the side and then down there, let's see if I can point it, it becomes the darker color. And that could be the corner where he was sitting towards the beginning of the movie. Now I'm actually standing exactly where he was sitting on the scenes where he tried to leave, Sheriff came, convinced them to stay. That famous shot of them both sitting on the bench right here. Having that tense conversation. And he, the sheriff that is, first approaches from over here. You can see the water tower in the background. And actually, I don't know if this is the same one, but this thing matches perfectly. It's not in the exact same spot. Would have been behind. Uh, this door right here but everything matches up from this except for the color which obviously could have been painted the handle matches the three uh, boards sticking up and G M and O were the trains used in the movie so uh, serious movie history iconic movie history happening right here at this train stop if you ever want to come visit this place once it's back open after COVID, it's called the Misslehorn Art Gallery. This guy is known as the Norman Rockwell of the Midwest, which I'm assuming means he is a realist or draws everything as true to life as possible. Uh, I've heard they have some in the heat of the night stuff in there, which makes me really disappointed that we couldn't go in, but um, I'll for sure be back to visit once I can. Oh, another fun fact. There was an actual murder that was unsolved at the time of the filming that took place here at this train station. And they didn't know until afterwards. And uh, it's funny because the movie is a murder mystery. I don't know if it ever got solved because I found that in an old newspaper from the 60s. If it wasn't solved, that means it's been almost 100 years. one shot in, in the heat of the night that I'm very proud of. We were down on the banks of the Mississippi and all of a sudden we realized he's going across the bridge. And uh, you can see the tiny figure running across the empty bridge. I said, do you have a lens that we could move in that far? He said, well, we got a 500 millimeter. So they bring out this, I'd never seen it before, they brought out this big 500 millimeter zoom lens. So, when I see that shot, every time I see that shot, I go crazy because I realize it's one of the best shots of any of the films I've shot. Okay, so this is the alleyway where they first discover the body that kicks off the movie, the inciting incident. All happens right here. Uh, that building on the left was called something different at the time. Derussi? I don't even know if it's showing the whole sign, but yeah, we're here in downtown Sparta, finally. And it's snowing on us. Well, yeah, up and down this street, you see the sheriff driving. Uh, you see a bunch of stuff driving. And it's crazy because a lot of this stuff looks exactly the same and a lot of it's really different than what it was in the 60s. If you just drove through here, looked at these buildings, you might think these could have been here in the 60s, but if you look down that way especially, it's way different than it was. So here's another angle of where they found the body in the movie. 
The uh, police officer rolls up here, he gets out of his car, that shot's taken from across the street, then it flips over here, and then a whole team of people come to investigate, a photographer, a doctor, they're all standing right here, and you can see that building right there in the background it looks exactly the same today, or pretty identical. Here's the corner where the sheriff drives. Take note of this spot because when the sheriff drives and goes to that car parts place or whatever it is, it actually ends up going in a huge circle. And he could have just down on this corner gone to that same spot. But anyways, he pulls up this road, camera pans over, and you see him drive downtown. The buildings look a lot different. Of course, it's been over 50 years since the movie was made. Uh, but the shapes are still pretty much the same. Okay, so here's where the sheriff comes and like I was saying, he makes a big circle. I told you to remember where he started. That's that building right there. So he makes a big circle, drives past this building, which I think this is the uh, Henderson's building from the movie. It looks the same, but front's a little bit different. The doors and windows I feel like are a little bit different. The shape's slightly different. And the road, I don't know, maybe that isn't. But anyway, he goes past it and turns into this corner where the shop was. That is no longer there. The house in the background's no longer there, but that's where he was. He went in a big circle just to move uh, a couple of meters. It's hard to match up because the building doesn't exist anymore, but I'm pretty sure the police station was right here on this corner, which is now a fire station. Looks nothing the same, but there's a couple of clues. So first, that building way back there, I believe was Sparta Lumber Company which is now a pawn shop. And then if you look at this building right here, that brick short building, plus the triangular part of this roof coming down, that matches up. Also this building here, which I believe could have been here, but it was before this part was added. So it went, there was a space here, it went straight back and the police station was right here. But those two windows match up and that doorway matches up. That's the reason I think that. Of course, it could have been torn down and rebuilt. It just looked very similar because there were two windows on the front, or one window, I can't remember. Um, two windows. But, uh, yeah, I'm fairly certain this is the spot. Uh, the area looks way different now. Um, if you look at the police station from this angle, where that shot turns to, all this stuff on this road looks totally different. Demolished. So, on back back then, there's a little alley over here behind the uh, fire station, and uh, there used to be a single alley firehouse with the police station behind it. Um, at the back of the building, there's a steel door where it used to be the entrance to the jail. So it used to be one one door firehouse, four fire trucks back then. They'd have to pull one out to get one from the back. Um, it was very complicated back then. But yeah, the jail and firehouse all, all used to be right here in one position. Cool. Uh, the city hall actually was on the main strip, so it wasn't together back where it is now. So, so there, there was a police station right there? Yes, it was. All right, so I was right. Confirmed.
location, or the garage location, where uh, Rod Steiger and Sidney Poitier go, was right here. And I'll tell you how I knew that. It's all torn down now. The garage was about right there. And I have confirmed with aerial photography from 1968 that this was the spot. And I think, now this was not showing in the movie, but I think this mailbox was here. Because you can kind of see it in the aerial shot, that curve of the mailbox. I don't know for sure, because it's far away, but this is definitely the spot where they filmed that scene. In the heat of the night, which I'm thinking about how they filmed in the fall. And it must have been really cold. And I think they should have called it in the chill of the night because it is snowing right now and it's below 40 degrees. Well, let us say the people who work for Mr. Colbert might reasonably regard you as the person least likely to mourn his passing. We were just trying to clarify some of the evidence. Was Mr. Colbert ever in this greenhouse, say last night about midnight? Good, that's me. Yeah. You saw it. Well, I saw it. Well, what are you gonna do about it? I don't know. The scene builds beautifully and quite understandably to a point where, offended by my uh, asking him personally about his whereabouts, that he slaps me, which was, I suppose, f f out of his culture and his values, was the proper thing to do. And he was quite emotional about it. He was so offended that he slapped me. And I said to Walter, I said, uh, in my life, whether I am I'm a uh, detective or not. And I don't care where I am, if such a thing happened to me, the likelihood is I would respond. And my response would be certainly not to absorb it. And he said, what, what do you mean? I said, well, it would be an instant response. And the response would be, in kind. It was designed on the basis of a man's humanity. If it is offended in that way, it's difficult for him not to. So uh, the production people were a little queasy about that. I said, well, then they have no deal. And I said, if we do it that way, it stays in the picture. <laughs> and, and they said, OK. So that, it worked. back in here so I don't want to run too deep um, but somewhere back here was the area where he ran away from the rednecks that tried to attack him could that be the building I was able to find from an old fire marshal's map that it was 
day shop where they fix the trains. Uh, and I found an aerial photo. Where you can see a bunch of stuff. Okay, I pinpointed my area on the GPS, which uh, I'm gonna have to go with a screenshot here because that's not focusing. But I found that I am in the general spot, like pretty close to where that building was. I think I might have even been where I'm standing because these, um, what well, looks like a road, there used to be train tracks running across it, which I'll show you with an old aerial photo. But yeah, I think I'm actually standing inside. Uh, or looking at, and could this be pieces from the building? The roundhouse area, the shops. Well, got your ticket? Here you are. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Virgil? You take care. You hear?